In this video, I am going to teach you how to stop being stuck at a chess rating. So many of you volunteered for this video when I made the community post, almost 4,000 comments. And what I've done is I've selected four really good profiles. And if you're close to those people in rating, then you should pay attention. Uh, the ratings are from 750 to 2000. We're actually ending with an example of myself, my own personal life. Um, and we're going to kick things off with Nico, who said that he's stuck at 750 since he began the game. We're going to look at every single profile and I will give you my opinion of what's good, what's bad, and what these people should do to improve. Now, Nico's 750. So what you need at this level is a solid opening base. You need to do your puzzles, maybe 10 to 15 of them a day, try to get them right, get basic checkmate patterns and practice. Now, first thing we do when we look at Nico's profile, Nico doesn't do a lot of puzzles, almost none. And... If we also take a look at some of his statistics uh, in terms of rapid chess, which is what he primarily plays, with white, Nico does quite well. Nico scores 50% with the white pieces. You should always look at your own statistics. And with black, I mean, you know, the stats are a little bit more or less balanced, maybe losing a little bit. So the point of Nico is that he's not skewed one way or the other. He seems more or less balanced. However, upon further investigation, what I found with a gentleman from Georgia is that he, there's a lot of this stuff going on in the opening. A lot of inventing is what I call this. Oops, sorry, a lot of inventing. What Nico needs to do, if he wants to break out of six and 700, is he's got to pick a couple of very simple openings with white and with black. If he doesn't have a lot of time because he's working a lot, maybe with white, Nico plays the London system. Just a very simple D4 and Bishop F4, learns it, watches a couple videos, and it seems to me that the biggest flaw for this person, rated 750, 700, 680, is the fact that they don't have a solid opening base and they're not doing a lot of puzzles. They're playing a lot of games because they enjoy them, but overall, uh, Nico is not doing a good job with generally studying and then implementing that kind of a thing. And actually, you know, I don't mean to put Nico on the spot, but Nico's guilty of it himself. He said, I figured I kind of need to learn openings like King's Indian. I simply have a poor understanding of the concept. Well, that is chess. There is a learning curve. Uh, and he says that I prefer a quick mate in the least possible amount of moves. So, Nico and all beginners rated about 800 and lower. You all have to have a good understanding of fundamentals. You need to diligently train. That is truly what holds a lot of the beginners back, is that we are convincing ourselves that we are studying by playing, but it's not quite the case. And no three-minute games. Nico plays a lot of fast games. You want to be an improving beginner? 10 minutes at least, 15 minutes preferred. Quality over quantity. Two games a day max, win or lose, don't play anymore. Analyze those games and study, study, study before you just jump into the pool. You don't swim before you know how to swim. You don't just jump in the water, right? So Nico and all beginners, that is my advice to you. Now for the second person in this video, we are taking a look at Caden. Says he's rated 1250, stuck for 10 months, age 20, studies in university like many of you. And Caden's profile is very interesting, okay? I had a lot of fun uh, with this one. So... If we go back, and uh, his username is Stogdad. So if we go back to Caden, right? Caden uh, actually plays a lot of games. Not rapid, but blitz. Caden has almost four, uh, actually over 4,000 blitz games played. Uh, and if we look at the puzzles, Caden does do puzzles. But look at Caden's solve rate. So this is number one. 220 out of 450 is just under 50%. If you want to improve at puzzles, you need to go for 60% scores, Okay. And what I've done is I've taken a look and I say, there's a lot of blitz in here. And the thing about three minute blitz games and five minute blitz games, sometimes you pop off with 97, which is what he did in this game. And sometimes you win again, a game playing 20%. We want to cut the variance. What is this? We can't play a game 20% accurately, right? If we're trying to get better, that is the problem. Now, again, this person is in university. Many of you are in university. It is hard to study while you're studying for things that are more important than chess. Crazy, right? But now... What I found uh, in taking a look at his blitz games is with black, 49% loss rate and with white, 44% loss rate, right? So he is very solid with the white pieces, very good, over 51%, still we want, uh, about 51%, but we want to take a deeper look here. And at the rating of 1250, 1350, 1450, 1550, all of this applies that I'm about to tell you. Once you go... And, and, and start doing your puzzles. 15 correct every single day. You want to get 15 out of 15, as close to 100% as possible. Set aside an hour if you can. But take a look at this. I went to the opening explorer, okay, for Stock Dad. Now, with the black pieces, E4, 
Stogdad is playing a lot of e5, and he, he doesn't have a very good score with the black pieces. Why is that? Well, it looks like if you follow his, all the top moves, he goes for a lot of this. Stogdad is worried about the fried liver in e4, e5 positions. But maybe Stogdad should incorporate the fried liver into his repertoire and play and learn the Traxler. Openings at this level to counteract your opponents at 12 and 1300, so, so, so important. So allow the fried liver and crush them with a Traxler counterattack. Very easy to learn. Watch one video from this guy on YouTube named Gotham Chess. Kind of a stupid guy, but has some pretty good content. Bishop c5 and, and, and crush people, okay? None of this h6, right? Th this is kind of a shortcut that you take, but if you do a little bit of diligent study at this level, really analyze what the problem is with white and with black in the games that you're playing, you're gonna be great. Maybe we take a look at d4. d4, he, when he's playing black, a lot of Londons. Knight c6. See, this is not the best way to play the London. I just launched an episode of How to Win at Chess, episode five, uh, where the very first game, I'm, I'm playing a London and I'm showing that you have to go c5. So fine-tuning your lines against the openings at this level is super important, and you can use this to get up to 18, 1900. But how about with white? With white, look at what Stockdad plays once when, when Stockdad has the white pieces. e4, e5, and we could flip this, right? e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, knight c3. But this is not a very challenging approach to the opening. This is just a very solid approach, just developing your pieces. Instead, why don't you learn a gambit with white or with black? Play a Danish gambit. Do you know how much you will destroy people at the 1250 level playing like this? You will crush them. So your openings are very calm and you've, you've learned what Nico should learn, right? Nico, the first beginner we analyzed, the solid opening base, but now it's time to challenge people. Don't forget, the opening is still a competitive affair. Right? The opening is not just, I gotta get my pieces out, blah, 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 and then we go to battle. No, you can knock, it's a fight. It's like in mixed martial arts, you can knock someone out in five seconds. There's no rule, oh, you gotta wait like a minute before, what? No, you could start knocking people out in the first few moves. So stock that with the puzzles should calm down, solve puzzles diligently, and more frequently, they don't do a lot of puzzles, more frequent puzzle solving, train your tactics, and then fine tune your openings, play more aggressive openings at this level, 12, 13, 14, 1500. I have openings courses, but if you can't, you know, if you're a student, you don't wanna spend money on chess, there's a lot of content on YouTube for aggressive uh, and tricky openings uh, and things of that nature. So hopefully that helps. Now, for this third person, I'm gonna go back to full screen mode and just quickly talk about this for a second. This next person uh, is from France, 32 years old and works in finance. Now, when you're an adult and you're trying to get better at chess, whether you played it in your youth or you're just starting out and you work in something like more corporate, it is going to be difficult to find time to genuinely study because you are working a lot. Maybe chess is your escape. Maybe chess is something you do for 10 minutes when you sit on the toilet at work. But in either of those cases, if you actually want to get better, this next person, uh, Ernest from France, this is gonna be a very interesting example. Um, this person stuck about 15, 1500, 15, 1600. All right, let's take a look. So what is the problem here? Whereas the last person that we just looked at doesn't do enough puzzles, this person does far too much on their chess. They do too much. You look, they play nonstop, okay? And what I call this is empty games. You see a lot of bullet games. You're not gonna get better playing bullet. You're not gonna get better just spamming random things. This person plays chess for the love of the game and that is great, but they did submit themselves to be a volunteer in this video. So if you wanna get better at the 15, 1600 level, you gotta do everything that I just told the other person at 1250, you, but, but look, this person overdoes it. And sometimes the people who love the game study it the worst. And what I mean by that is, we take a look at puzzle stats. This person does a lot of puzzles. That's a lot of puzzles. And look, it's every day. It's every day, bro, in the words of Logan Paul. I can't believe I just said that out loud. Scrub that from your memory. He is the guy that made that video of the song, right? Anyway, so look at all these puzzles. But look at this. 12 seconds, four seconds, 30 seconds, a minute. No, 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 no. You have to cut back. 15 puzzles a day, as I've been saying, and that's it. It does not matter if I get them right or wrong. I'm gonna try to get them all right. I will spend three, four minutes on a puzzle if I have to. If you don't have a lot of time because you're working in corporate, that's all good. Make it 10 puzzles. 
but don't do this. You want to get better at the game, you want to improve, don't do this. And one more thing about Ernest, which I really did not like, is the openings. Ernest with the white pieces. I'm, I'm assuming it's Ernest. I'm sorry. If you're French, it's probably Ernest. Okay, I'm going to say the American way. Ernest. Um, a lot of d4 with white, which is good. But you got to choose. Look at this. Bishop g5 and c4. Even split. Pick one. Or do what I told the other guy. Switch it up. Look at Ernest with, with white. 63% win rate with e4. Maybe that's all you need. And look at what you're playing, knight f3. Oh, look, look, even here there's like king's gambit with white. So knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4. You are winning so many games with the Italian. Stick to it. What do you play against bishop c5? Okay, throw in an Evans gambit. Learn a gambit. Focus on what you're good at using the statistics page and keep doing it. Now with black, this is where it's very troubling. So look at what the black pieces. I told you, people who love the game variety is not the spice of life in chess 989 games of this and this this is fine if you just want to be a hobby player but if you want to go from 1500 to 1800 pick one and stick to it master it go and play set yourself a maximum go back and repeat analyze a basketball player will go to the court and shoot 100 shots and that's it they will not shoot 120 because they wanted to They'll shoot 100, see how they do, they'll come back, they'll shoot 100. There has to be structure when you are training to improve at the game of chess, okay? And you cannot have this much of a sample size of openings. Pick one. If you want to get better, if you just want to play, by all means, mix it up, by all means. But if you are trying to get better, focus on one at most, focus on two, because you need to master your craft. If something's not working, you got to change it up, okay? That is one thing that I noticed about Ernest. This person's 32 years old. Like I said, maybe they're working in finance and chess for them is just a way to have some fun, but to get better at the game, unfortunately, you do have to kind of cut back on the fun uh, and um, you have to stick to something. And I think one more thing, if we go back to the stats page, just very briefly, um, was there a, I think I noticed, yeah, like with white, Ernest is winning nearly 52% of games, which is good. It's very good. I mean, try to get this up to 55 if you want to, you know, totally dominate. Oh, no, no, I apologize. That was all games. With white, it was 54%. That's huge. That's massive. That's, that's amazing. 42% loss rate? That's great. This is almost 40%. That's great. But with black, look at that, an extra 5% loss rate. So with black, pick an opening, do well with it, maybe play a gambit to throw your opponents off. With white, dude, do what you're doing. It's working, right? It's working. You're winning with white. You're playing well with white. Maybe play more gambits with white if you want. Like with e4, we saw you win 64% of the time. You get those positions better. That is what you got to do. And for this last one, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go back to full screen to introduce it. Like I said, for this last one, we're talking about me, Gotham. When I was 12 years old, I crossed 2,000 for the first time. And you say, Levy, that's crazy. You were better than me. Guys, I played chess since I was five years old. It's all I did. I ate chess. I, I literally, I probably swallowed a pawn every now and then. I slept chess. I, I, I breathed it. When I was 12, I crossed 2,000 for the first time. Okay, and we're going to take a look. I was the same level for three years. I quit chess for gaps at a time. No studying. I hated it. I was dejected. And before we jump into the chess, if you've made it this far in the video, um, sometimes you need a break. You might hate that. I'm watching a chess YouTuber telling me I need to take a break. Yeah. Sometimes you need to step away, take one or two games a day, and that's it. Just watch videos and streams, but don't always be playing because tilt is real, and everybody escapes tilt in chess differently. The other day, I went down 250 blitz points. I got frustrated. I played off stream on my phone. I got back into it. I went 9 0 against the Grandmaster, and it got me my mojo back. But if you've been at a certain rating and you drop, you're the strength you were. You just aren't performing up to par. Take a break, take a walk, drink some food, have some wine if you're of age, hang out with your loved ones or your friends or play a video game, and then come back with a fresh and clean mind. Find what works for you. Now, having said all that, we go to Mr. Gotham Chess, Levy Rosman. This is me. This is me now. This is my US Chess Federation page, and I'm gonna take you through a little journey of how I got back into chess. So in 2008, I hit right here, 2,000. And back then, being a 12-year-old 2,000 was impressive. 
In fact, it was so impressive that in August of 2008, I was the second highest rated 12 year old in the country. Number one, you, some of you might know him, Daniel Naroditsky, streamer and YouTuber. Number three, my best friend to this day, Alexander Ostrovsky. And if you fuse Rosman and Ostrovsky, you get Rozovsky. What do you want? A lot of Russians play chess. It was good, but I was that rating for three years until 2011. I quit chess. I was a moody teenager. I was figuring out all sorts of different things about life. Well, not really, actually. I was just being a teenager. And what got me back into the game was the fact that I came back and my friend Ostrovsky, Alex Ostrovsky, showed me a book. And it was a book on the Karokan. It's called Lars Skandorf Grandmaster Repertoire 7. And I read the book and it was just, I was a clean slate. I didn't hate chess anymore. And I was reading this book like, this is kind of interesting. And you know what happened after reading the book? The very first tournament that I played after I read the book, um, I think I have it here. I'm going to have to move this over. The very first tournament that I played, this is going to be ugly. I'm very sorry. I beat a master. Look at this. The very first tournament I played in 2011, I beat eight. The person right above me, James West, 2200. Up until this point in my life, I had never beaten a master level player in a tournament game. This was a 30 minute game per player. And I, uh, I had never done it. And I beat him with the Karakan. And that, to me, you know, reinvigorated a fire. You'll notice my, my year by year statistics. My peak rating in, 20, in 2008, 2060. My peak rating the next year, 2057. I went down three points in a year, then I went up 30, but I was the same strength for three years. In 2011, I played the most amount of games since one of the earliest years of my life playing chess. I won 63% of my games, which is more than any of the other years before, except the very first one. And I peaked at 2255. I gained 160 points in a year all because I took some time off. I only played online or things that weren't super nerve wracking and stressful. I learned a brand new opening and I went on to win tons of games in the Karakon because I loved it. It was easy to understand and I absorbed the information like a sponge. And the interesting thing is to this day, my friends, the Karakon remains my first love. Against E4, my main weapon is the Karakon defense and I win 62% of games with it against many, many strong grandmasters. I played a, you know, I've, I've beaten many, many, many strong grandmasters with the Karakon, including a blitz game against Hikaru. It was the only blitz game that I've beaten him uh, where, and then he beat me 10 straight and adopted me, but it was the Karokan defense and it continues to be my main weapon and I love it and I keep adding layers to it. So listen, um, hopefully this helps. If you are a beginner, focus on the fundamentals, make yourself do the work, puzzle solving, a quantity over, uh, a quality over quantity approach. Don't do hundred puzzles, do 10, 15, 20, 25, but get as many right as possible. You gotta be better than 50%. You gotta be better than 60%, right? On puzzle solving and gameplay. Um, if you're 12, 13, 1400, openings are so important. Oh my goodness, for me, openings, Karakon saved me at 2000. So openings and adding new ones will always make chess more interesting and exciting. Find what works for you. Find how to mitigate being upset and being in a slump and overcoming that adversity when things are not going your way. And the most important thing is do not convince yourself you are doing the work because oftentimes you are not. There is a better way to study and better way to train. Cut back on the games that you play. Cut back on the puzzle solving. Quality over quantity, my friends. Hope this helped. Let me know if there's any questions in the comments. If there's any topics that I haven't covered, also let me know that as well. I was very excited to make this video and I'm very glad we kept it under 20 minutes. So I will catch you in the next one.